Welcome to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you are tuning in with us today. Today, Pastor Jeremy File is teaching on the application of truth. The Bible instructs us to be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Pastor Jeremy is teaching us on how to apply the truth. We believe today's message is going to strengthen, encourage, and maybe even challenge you. Let's head into the sanctuary now with Pastor Jeremy. We gotta make this year count, time is short. I said we gotta make this year count, time is short. I believe it with all my heart. Mark just said it, and it's not just hype. Listen to me carefully. Jesus is coming, and he's coming soon. You may have heard it a hundred thousand times. Let me tell you, it's more true today than you are true being here. Jesus is coming. It's been prophesied. People don't believe it. I'm telling you, he's coming. And you got to live in such a way that you expect to see him. That means perilous days are here. When you read your New Testament, you see that the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, warned Christians that perilous days would come in the last days. That doesn't mean for the people in the world it's going to be perilous, though it might be. He was talking to Christians. Meaning as a Christian, there's going to be difficult things for you to navigate on a daily basis. Well, one reason for that is we're beginning to see what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 8 was the beginning of sorrows. It's what King James says, when you look at that word, it means birth pains. Now, since I'm a man, I can't really relate to birth pains, but I've watched birth pains and heard all about them my whole life. One thing I do know about them is this. As the birth comes closer, the birth pains increase with frequency and intensity. At least that's what I'm told. Garrett still has a crooked finger to prove it. You hadn't heard that story the first time around. You know, they were four months ahead of us. We go to the hospital. I'll never forget hearing Farrell screaming in there. I was thinking, Lord have mercy. (laughs) Garrett comes out. I said, what's up? Don't let your wife see your finger in the moment of heat there. She was in some intense pain. Let me see your finger. He said, here you go. She bit him. I ain't lying to you. Why? The birth was soon to happen. We're going to see things on this earth, the likes of which we haven't seen before. Crazy things even. Be prepared. Don't be afraid. Be prepared. Jesus is coming. Keep your eye to the sky. Keep your hand to the plow. Let's go, somebody. You might as well shake off everything that's going on in your life right now and focus on the Lord. Get ready to receive today. This is no time to be playing around in your relationship with God or His Word. This isn't the time. Not that there was ever a good time to play around with God, but I'm telling you right now, as time is like in a funnel, Charles Capps saw this years ago. As we get to the end, it narrows up, meaning what you do matters a whole lot more. You see that whether you're playing a sports game or anything else. What a team does in the last minute of a close game matters more than what they did in the first quarter seemingly. I mean, it always matters, but not quite as much as when the game's on the line. Well, your life may be on the line. Jesus is coming soon. It matters what you do. Jesus, in Matthew 24, talks to us about the day we find ourselves in. I want you to say, thank God for the word. Go to Matthew 24 and verse 10 this morning. Matthew 24 and verse 10. New King James is on the screen. Now, I'm going to say this. We live in in a time where you've got to study to show yourself to be approved. There are people on all sides of all kinds of arguments. One I want to bring up is people that say you can only look at the King James. The most accurate Bible out there is King James. That's the most accurate in the English language, okay? King James, he was a king, a little king. He had the top scholars of his day all come together. And they spent hours upon hours upon hours to accurately translate it. 
Now, there are all kinds of modern versions. You have it on your device most likely, but there's all kinds of them available at bookstores and things too. And if you'll really start studying, some of these newer translations literally obliterate and take out some verses. They say because, quote, it's not in some manuscripts. Well, the reason it's not in some manuscripts is because the people that were behind this decision-making wanted to take manuscripts that left some things out. Why do you think that happens? To pervert the Word of God, because the parent force of the universe is the Word of God. Now, when I preach here, as you know, if you've been here more than once, I use New King James most of the time. Every once in a while, I'll use a paraphrase or something to emphasize a point, and I always, always, always warn you about those. Why? Because it's not safe to take, let's say, the message or the living Bible or even the NIV, which I personally have a disdain for. Um, if you take those and that's your main Bible, you're going to get confused because of all the misinformation that's been brought in. A new King James saves me as a pastor time, so I'm not spending a lot of time explaining words that we don't use anymore and what they mean bringing them up to modern day vernacular. New King James has done a pretty fairly good job on that. So that's why I use that. Everybody good? I'm being pastoral this morning. But you didn't come to the typical church that's geared around your comfort. It's geared around making you a disciple. So sometimes I got to explain these things to you. Matthew 24, thank the Lord for his word. Amen. Amen. Jesus said about the beginning of sorrows, our day, many will be offended. We could close our Bibles and go home. If you meditated on that, you'd recognize why so much is going on in your life already. I've seen it. You've seen it. We've dealt with it. You can't help but opportunities for offense will come. Here's my charge to you. Don't take the opportunities. Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. Our regional and international student conventions encourage and train our mighty warriors in competitions both academically and physically. With events in academics, athletics, exhibits, music, and platform, your student will be challenged and inspired to develop their God-given gift and talent. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website at acceleratechristianschool.cc or you can call our office, 806-418-8913. Every time your feelings get hurt, every time offense rears its ugly head, it is a trap Satan is setting. Now, you may not believe this because <clears throat> it doesn't feel good when you get your feelings hurt. But what does feel good is to have a pity party and join others in it. So someone offended becomes a, the most ardent evangelist ever. Feelings get hurt. That's when they're very quick to check in, like in this case, in this church, with other partners real quick. Offense shows up. Boom. What's going on? You okay? I'm here for you. Well, that's funny. I haven't heard from you in months, maybe a year. Offense shows up, and you may not know this. Some of you right here in this fellowship, sitting right here looking at me right now, may not understand you're being used by the devil sitting in church because you care when offense came. Now, you didn't care before offense came. That's the problem. That's called hypocrisy. Now, why do I preach like this? To make people mad? No, so that your blood's not on my hands when I face the king. Because the way some of you keep acting, feel real good just talking like this. I'm not arrogant. I just know. The way some of you act, as soon as an opportunity for offense comes, you're jumping. It's like a basswood at a worm or a minnow. And the devil's like, hooked. And the dirty shame is to use other church members to encourage it. 
unwittingly, unknowingly. I'm just trying to support, just trying to show my love. Why didn't you show your love before the offense? That's the problem. Are you tracking with me? None of this is in my notes, but it's in my spirit. Jesus said, many will be offended. You may not agree with that statement, but a mark of end times is offense. It's coming. Will you pass the test? Look at your neighbor and say, I'll pass it. Say it, I'll pass the test. Will you really? You better, you better, you better, because it's coming for every one of us. We got to pass this test. I got to get further than this. Jesus said, because of offense, look at this. People will, many will betray one another. That's how, oh man, that happens. Offense happens. People that have always loved you betray you. And then it turns into this. We'll hate one another. Now look, at, the devil doesn't play fair. When you're offended, when betrayal happens, those feelings of hatred get stirred up, look what happens. Many false prophets rise up. If false prophets rise up, their followers rise up, false Christians, and deceive many. See, you're getting more out of this than you thought already. I am at least preaching it. See, that, that's the way the devil, he plays it. It's not, he don't play fair. He's a cheap shot, cheap shot artist. He's always hitting below the belt. You hear what I'm saying? He's lawless. But the, there's nothing he can do about the word of God if you'll stay submitted to the Lord Jesus through his word, spend time fellowship with the Holy Spirit, stay planted where he's called you to be planted. It's pretty much all she wrote for the devil. In your life. But see, if you can be offended and that make your decisions, then you will also be deceived because when offense comes, deception comes. It's always this pattern. Write it down. When offense comes, get ready because of deception is following it soon after. People get offended, then they get deceived. Time and time and time again. Now, the way you can stay free of that is be quick to repent. If you're quick to repent, that's, that's the antidote to this. But Jesus is letting us in on the game plan of the enemy at the end. His disciples had asked him at the beginning of this chapter, what will it be like at the end? The very first thing he says is, take heed, no one deceives you. There will be earthquakes, wars, rumors of wars, nation, that means ethnic group against ethnic group. We've seen it. Just like he said. And then we see this, many offended, many betraying, many hating, many false prophets rising up, the perfect storm to deceive many. And Matthew 24, 12, because lawlessness will abound, it becomes popular to be without the law of God. The love of many will grow cold. But, verse 13 tells us, he who endures halfway through life, he who endures until 2022, till when? You're just going to have to keep enduring. I'll tell you, this little verse, most of you have heard it, I've preached it, I've heard it since I can remember but there's so much power in this verse. Every time I go through something, I say, thank you, Lord. I'm enduring to the end. I'm not, a, to about, I'm not about to let choppy waters take me out. I'm not about to let what so-and-so said or what so-and-so thinks take me out. I'm going to endure to the end. Say that with me. I'm going to endure to the end. Say it. I'll never give up. I'll never, I'll never quit. Praise God. Lawlessness is abounding today. Therefore, the God kind of love doesn't go to work in people's heart anymore. They don't love each other. They can't separate, uh, you know, someone making a mistake driving. We're pretty cutthroat out there, aren't we? In such a hurry. Aren't we? Have you driven lately in Amarillo? 
or anywhere else? I mean, it was, it's pretty cutthroat out there, isn't it? I told my wife yesterday, I'm just minding my own business. I have no, I am for sure not intentionally trying to make anybody mad. Don't tell my police buddies this, but I was going four miles over the speed limit on the interstate. And it made somebody just flaming hot mad that I was not going 90. I'm talking angry. I said, I'm not, I don't pull this out where I pull out and go 20 in a 70. That's dangerous. I understand people saying, what are you doing? Like, you got to pay attention. But I pay attention when I'm driving. And I said, this person, I'm getting on. I'm speeding up and speeding up and speeding up and speeding up. And I'm like, huh, huh. And they don't want me to get over. And then they all, they're all mad. I said, <laughs> I'm trying here just to be myself. And I stopped thinking, you know what? There's a lot of people that are cutthroat like that. I asked my wife, I said, what's going on? I'm just like minding my own business. I'm going to take my wife on a date here. And you know what she quoted me? Matthew 24. The love of many will wax cold. Why? Lawlessness. I said, oh, you can't relate it to someone driving. Yeah, you can. It's so cutthroat, people living on edge. The reason why? No love of God in their heart. Here's the thing about endurance. It's easier to talk about than to walk in. Because to endure, you got to test yourself. You live in the United States of America. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. America is the only nation founded on Christian principles. All 13 of the original co colonies wrote out as a part of their law exactly verbatim what Moses wrote in the Old Testament. All 13. People say, it's not a Christian. Uh, I beg your pardon. You can just stop talking there. It is a Christian nation, whether you believe it or not, whether you've been misinformed or not. That's how they founded this thing. And the reason they worded the First Amendment the way they did is not so Muslims can come here and practice their religion. The way a Muslim believes, according to the Quran, is anti-freedom. Freedom comes when you know the truth, and the truth makes you free. So the reason our founding fathers, I've been studying this again if you can't tell, the reason they said and, and worded the First Amendment the way they did, freedom of religion, is because there were different sects of Christianity they were trying to keep from them exploding in arguments against each other. Say, so you just serve the Lord, kind of like how you see typically a Baptist and a charismatic or, a, a, you know, a Baptist and a, and a Pentecostal. We believe in the same Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the word of God. But there's things that we that, that believe, you know, that are differences. So to keep out of all the woods there, they just said, you got a freedom to to serve God and follow him. They never I don't think ever dreamed anyone would come here with a false religion and that the majority of this country would accept it. It was founded on Christian principles. But a few years have passed, not even 300. The reason I bring that up, when you study Israel's history in the Old Testament, you see that much like America, when they would serve God and they'd say, the basis of our laws are going to be the Word of God, God would bless them as a nation. They would start increasing above all other nations. Hello, America. But then they would depart from God. Time and time again, study the Old Testament, you'll see. It's true, it's true, isn't it, Pastor Ricky? That's what they would do. They would serve God. God would bless them as a nation. Then they would turn from God when they were in their paneled houses and say, my might got me this. Wow. Well, you see America following that same pattern. And in the public life of the United States of America, in the public arena, in schools that are funded by tax money, even in some churches right now, you see an overall rejection of the Ten Commandments. reason I say that, I'll never forget as long as I live. Right here in Amarillo, Texas, went to one of our largest churches, was able to meet a man that came to town that had books about the Harbinger, very powerful night of ministry. I was able to meet him back in the back room before service, and it was really a blessing in my life. But what I'll never forget is sitting in that church, which is rare that I ever get to do that anyway because I'm here at this church where God called me right and I was there 
and I noticed how many empty seats there were at what's normally at the beginning of the year a packed service. And a man was up there telling us, as Americans, you're going to have to repent. Because after 9-11, we didn't repent. What we said is we'll re rebuild stronger. There was no repentance. Right? So this man's warning us, you got to repent. I saw empty chairs, which normally aren't there. The next night, here comes my former favorite preacher into town. Every single overflow room is packed to the brim. Standing room only. And he stands up and tells us right here in Amarillo, we don't need the Ten Commandments. I'll never forget it. Pretty symbolic. And people say, well, what's your problem? Who do you think you are? I think I just read this and believe this. God brings in a man. It's never been popular to hear the warning message. It's not popular. Not what Americans want to hear. It's what we need to hear. But instead, we flood. We got to have it. Shout. We rejoice when we hear we don't need the Ten Commandments. You will not endure to the end without commandments. We believe in linking up with like-minded believers, and that opportunity comes twice a month where we get to come together with our life links and dig into the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching on. We eat together, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships that are so vital to our Christian walk. We must be intentional with who we surround ourselves with, so we invite you to join us for LifeLinks happening on the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month. For more information regarding LifeLinks and where they meet, you can text the word LifeLinks to the number 74121, or you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc. Or hey, you can give us a call at 806 418 8913. We look forward to seeing you in the next Life Link. God gave us His commandments because in them is life, not death. Somebody said, Oh, you're preaching from that Old Testament. Yep. Unashamedly. Why? Because I found them in the New Testament. Through the blood of Jesus, now He's made a way for you and I so that we can be in covenant with Him. God didn't change. His availability to mankind changed. But we got to take it His way. There's no other way. So you're not going to endure if you hate commands because you don't love. Love waxes cold. What does that mean? Truly, when you really see it. Well, when you study the book of Romans, chapter 13, and you look down there in the mid part of that, what you find out is that if you truly love the way God said to love, you obey and he lists the Ten Commandments. It's just amazing to me. No, he didn't list all, all nine, but he listed all the ones you're personally responsible for. And if you study humans, you realize from the moment a human discovers America and they're born, they cry in resistance to something we all must face. We're not in control. They don't like it. It's all about them, the babies. Here you are. I don't have time to chase that trail. I want to, but listen, I got to get this. Here you are in the United States of America, 2022. Your pastor's telling you, make this your count. Keep the pressure on the enemy. Stick to the word. You know, you got to do this, right? You got to endure to the end. But when you look around our society and our culture, there's no more standard to apply. Because we have abandoned the standard, the Word of God. So as a nation, the United States doesn't hold this. Those not only that are elected civil leaders, but those that are paid, any, many, even many, many, many on the police force, they don't care anything themselves in their personal life about obeying this. They're to enforce the law, but the laws in America were originally founded based on this. We've got to have within our heart a passion to obey the Word. If we don't have a passion to obey the Word, everything as a nation that we are will fall. So, I'm talking about the nation. I'm not going to talk anymore about the nation because here's what you need to know. 
The reason the nation's in this state is because it starts on a personal level. If you and I cannot govern ourselves correctly and we don't have a standard that we hold to, how will we govern a nation? Why would I expect the leaders, the civil leaders, to hold this nation to a standard that I myself don't hold myself personally to? Now I'm ringing the bell of what's really going on here in America. Jot this down. The Word of God must be how we assess everything in life. That word assess means gauge, weigh, measure, judge. The Word of God must be how we assess everything. Example, husband, how do you treat your wife? Well, she's a nag, so forget her. That's not in the Word. You treat her as the weaker vessel. Some men jump on that. Yeah, you're weaker. Uh, that ain't what it said. Treat her as, King James, unto the weaker vessel. In other words, you honor her because she's precious to you. See, see this kind of word, that doesn't make anybody excited. Do you notice that? Because it places a demand on you, right? It's easy if you're like a Larry Brooks, and I watched him do this. For, I didn't watch him all 50 years. I'm not even 50 years old. He was married 50 years, but I've known him a long time since I was a teenager. One thing I always knew about him, he would go run and open the door for his wife. In that old building where we were over on Paramount, he would pull his car up right there. I watched it service after service, day after day. Does that mean Miss Margaret, who's now in heaven, was weaker than him? No, that didn't mean that at all. I mean, he treated her the way the Bible said to treat her. So therefore, they stuck it out and endured. If you want to stick it out and endure in your marriage, you're going to have to apply the Word of God. Now, I could take that and, and give you all kinds of examples, but for sake of time, look at this again. Write it down. Meditate on this this week. The Word of God must be how we assess everything in life. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. While this does conclude today's message, it does not conclude the series in its entirety. And if you would like to hear the rest of the application of truth, you can head over to our website at accelerate.church.cc. Or if you're in the area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett in Amarillo, Texas. Our service times are Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. If we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church television broadcast.